Hello and welcome to the Frontington and Backwards Railway. Today I'm making stuff dirty. I recently bought a few new items of rolling stock for my railway, because who doesn't love a good splurge every now and then? First up is this suburban coach. I actually already had one of these, but the iconic GWR B set generally came in sets of two, so I needed an extra one. This is not a new tooling, in fact it's an old Airfix model. Hornby did buy the tooling from them eventually, and they're still manufacturing it with hardly any change. But I wanted this old Airfix version, partly because it would match the other coach I've already got, and partly because Hornby used a different bogey on theirs, which used massive D-type couplings. The slim couplings on the older Airfix model is actually closer to the modern type couplings we're used to today. So that'll make a nice addition to the layout once it's behind a small prairie tank engine. My next investment was a Daypole cattle wagon. As you can see, this came factory weathered. It is perhaps a little smooth for my liking, but it's better than being sparklingly clean. And finally I bought this slightly older Daypole lime wagon. Now this isn't quite how it came out of the factory. When I received it in the post it was clean, and if I'm honest looked quite toy-like, so I've roughed it up a bit. I didn't film the process because I wasn't quite sure how it would turn out, but I'm pretty pleased with it. And with that lime wagon successfully weathered, I thought I'd turn my hand to some other items, and this time film it so that you can see the process. Weathering can be daunting, especially if you've not done much of it, because it can permanently mess up what you've spent good money on. So I'm using techniques that are mostly reversible, which limits the risk somewhat. For the purpose of this video I'm looking at my new coach. Unfortunately my camera got some condensation on the lens, so you can't really see what's going on here, but basically I'm using watercolour paints to give the roof a dark wash. Watercolours are easy to wash off if I don't like it, and gives a nice matte finish. And having removed the body and popped the glazing out, I'm picking out the window frames in brown acrylic paint. Once the paint is dry I can go over the roof with a cotton bud to buff away any brush marks and generally smooth out the effect. Next I picked out the door furniture with a metallic permanent marker which is a technique I've used effectively on other models too. Turning to the interior, that beige plastic is pretty awful, so I've painted over it with some more acrylic paints. It doesn't need to be amazingly precise, because you can't actually see much detail through the windows, but it helps. The underframe looked quite shiny and plasticky, so a coat of black watercolour paint was added. It doesn't change the colour, it just adds a bit of matte texture to it. And of course it's no good drawing attention to the interior if there are no people inside. These are cheap plastic mouldings that I've painted up and stuck in place. Again, it doesn't need to be particularly detailed, it just needs to give the right effect. And I've worked on the other coach too, so that they match. 
I've also painted the inside of the body shell, because the final step, for now at least, is that I'm adding some interior lighting, and I don't want it bleeding out through the walls. I'm mounting the battery box underneath, so that I can easily change the batteries, which means I need a small hole for the wires to come through. The LED strip is intended for a 5 volt supply, but LEDs don't mind being underdriven a little, so the 3 volts from my battery box will work just fine. The magic part of the installation is the addition of a latching reed switch, which I bought from Layouts for You. A normal reed switch completes the circuit when a magnet is placed near it. A latching reed switch keeps its state when you remove the magnet, which is perfect for things like this. I'm quite pleased with the end result. You can't see a lot of detail inside the coaches because of the thick plastic glazing, but you can see enough to know that there are people inside. The lighting is perhaps still a little too bright, but that'll be a job for another day. For now though, here are a few running shots. That's all for this video. Now, I'm by no means an expert, and I'm sure there are better ways of doing all this, 
but I hope it's given you some confidence to try out some weathering and wiring yourself. Let me know in the comments how you get on. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. Bye for now.